Price, do you mind poking your nose in there at some point? It should be fine. It just sort of runs out. I, I videoed all my students on placement. Oh, just with my iPhone. They don't know that I'm videoing. Sorry, you got it. And they're like, what is this? Um, no, because I asked the teacher first. Yeah. And I also asked the lead, so no one had seen but the students. Students that you're teaching 
are going to be are currently being brought up in an age like this, where there is constant change, constant uncertainty, a lot of movement, a lot of change, and and, um, and so this, these ideas um, are, are probably more appropriate, but perhaps difficult for us to to understand. So before I get into the service learning and volunteer perspectives, I want to draw upon Kurt Hester's work. Um, he calls it a pedagogy of interruption, and he also talks a lot about coming into the world and what that means. And in order to go there, I will first put up his criticism. He is really interested in education as being beyond learning. He's critical of education, which has pre a predetermined set of skills, knowledges and attitudes. And so in New Zealand, we talk a lot actually about education being about the acquisition of skills and knowledge and attitudes. And Gert Biesga, one of the leading uh, educational philosophers in the Western world, talks about, um, he critiques this, and he says it's, it's really problematic, and he doesn't think that education should be about acquisition. Okay, and uh, it's quite a radical perspective, I think, and I don't know of any schools that would adopt this philosophy, but um, perhaps, I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but um, we'll put it out there, I'll, I'll put this out there and see what you think. What he does instead is he suggests that education and I think this is particularly relevant for you guys as health educators, is focused on coming into the world where the world is engaging with people different to ourselves, that are strangers or others. The literature talks about strangers and or others. And um, so he says actually, what if education were about relationship primarily, and in particular, relationship with people who are distinctly different from ourselves, like not just somewhat different, because we're all attracted to like-minded people, but what if education was about relating and engaging to those who are distinctly different to ourselves? And he believes, his thesis is, that in this place of engagement with people completely different to ourselves, that is where, where we come into the world, where we um, grow the most, where we are challenged the most, where, we, where our subjectivity is disrupted and, and, um, and yeah, upset the most, I guess you'd say. So from Easter, he says, learning in this view is not about acquisition of knowledge or truth, it is about response and responding. Similarly, pedagogy, or the way you teach, is not about handing down truths to the next generation, but about creating opportunities for students to respond and, as a result, to come into the presence or come into the world. Um, and this, this theoretical perspective is really drawing um, on a philosopher called Levinas, and um, he was concerned primarily with the idea of relationship with other people, and in particular, he is, believes um, that what is most paramount in life is a relationship of intimate responsibility for others or for the other in others. So he says that actually what matters in life more than anything else is being an ethical responsibility to someone who is distinctly different from yourself. And he says that um, he would like to see this uh, be taken up or, or challenged within an education context. Sharon Todd is another person who writes with you Easter along the same, same lines. And she talks about, according to Levinas, she says it's the encounter with the other who is radically distinct from the self that enables the self to learn and to change. And the other is, um, the other, the person who is distinctly different from ourselves, interrupts a unified sense of self. So when you think about engaging with someone radically different to yourself, what it does, if you engage in that relationship openly and with humility, it will, um, it has the potential to destabilise you and to make you question and think differently to ways that you've ever questioned or thought in the past. And he's, he, he is excited by that idea of education, and so am I. And, um, and I think there are opportunities for how we can do this in schools. Um, carrying on from this idea, I think he summarises it really well here, um, with the work also by Carl Safstrom. And they write that the most important question today is no longer how we can rationally master the national, natural and social world, okay, that is education as acquisition of knowledge, skills and attitudes, the rationally mastering of the world. He says, rather than that, the most important question today is how we can respond responsibly to and how we can live, live peacefully with what and with whom is other. And so he's placing uh, Levinas' 
philosophy right there in the centre and saying, actually, let's consider education as ethical responsibility to the other. And our educators and um, education and sustainability would position um, responsibility to the natural world in there as well. Rather than mastering or conquering the natural world, you would consider how to live peacefully with the natural world. And so that kind of that statement really juxtaposes those two different theoretical perspectives. Okay, so rational communities, this is what we do in schools. We establish a rational community, okay? Because uh, education, uh, if you were to take the um, critical and humanistic perspectives, the modernist project, it's very much about developing rational, autonomous beings who are able to live um, in a harmonious world, okay? That is the establishment of a rational community. Is, um, the Easter sees this as really problematic um, in education. And um, he draws on the work of Bowman, Levi Strauss and Lingus and he argues that what rational communities do, and this is what schools do, is that they either devour to eat up or to spit or vomit out um, strangers or those who are different or other. And if you think about it, in education, this is very much what schools do. They will devour, that is to assimilate and say, come in, you can come in, you're different, but come in and be like us. Or, if this person is too different, they'll sit on the margins of the school, and if they cause problems on the margins of the school, then we will spit them out, we vomit them out of the school, and we exclude them from school. And having worked in um, alternative education for many years, working with students excluded from school, I really, um, I find this uh, analogy quite powerful and, and quite helpful to understand. Um, and this is what Le Levi Strauss essentially says. He says, um, either, Okay, so strangers are those who do not fit cognitively, morally, or aesthetically. What is aesthetically, not to fit aesthetically? They look different. different. And we talk a bit about really ob ob this obese alleged obesity epidemic as an example of what's not aesthetically pleasing and how we reject and how you see kids in schools like uh, reject those out to the sides who aren't aesthetically pleasing um, as an example, or perhaps some people with some physical disability and things like that. And so um, Levi Strauss says either that um, the stranger is assimilated through anthropophagic man-eating behaviour, annihilating the stranger by devouring them and then metabolically transforming them into a tissue indistinguishable from one's own. Or the other strategy is one of exclusion that Bowman describes as anthropoemic, vomiting the stranger, banishing them from the limits of the orderly world, and bar barring them from all communication with those inside. And uh, he goes on to say this, and, it, and then it, it makes links into teaching. He says, strangers, this is what strangers do. If you think about those that you've worked with in schools or in, in community who are really different, um, this is, I think, how they can make us feel. Strangers make obscure what ought to be transparent. They confuse what ought to be straightforward. They prevent satisfaction pollute joy with anxiety, befog and eclipse boundary lines, and gestate uncertainty, thus breeding discomfort. The stranger represents a loss of freedom for some, or the fear that freedom is under threat and may be lost. So strangers are sometimes considered as people to be resented. The teacher, who fears losing control, resents the stranger, fears the stranger, and is not, allowed to, is not about to let the stranger be. We seek to alter this stranger rather than run the fine risk of being altered by the stranger. So um, that we, and this is a quote from Levinas, receive nothing of the other, we receive nothing of that person who is distinctly different from ourselves than what is in us. So we only take that which is similar and we reject anything else. Um, so the third point around rational communities is um, what Biesta says here is that from the modern perspective, a rational being, and this is, I think, a project of schools, is one that fits within a present notion of rational community. So the role of teachers is to shape students into what and whom is already known. So we're shaping them into what is accepted cultural way of being. So Biesta writes that humanism, and this is a criticism against humanism as, a, as an idea, which is underlying the PE curriculum, it posits a norm of humaneness a norm of what it means to be human. 
and in so doing excludes those who do not live up to this norm. And that humanism is unable to be open to the possibility that the newcomer might radically alter our understanding of what it means to be human. So there's not really the room, room to be shaped and changed by different or other perspectives. Um, and so this sort of takes me into this idea of what it might mean for service learning. Um, but before I do that, I'll just um, conclude on this, these two points. So returning just in summary to Wiesner's thesis, he proposes that education be a project not of acquisition, that is learning of knowledge, skills and attitudes, but of coming into presence or of what he calls coming into the world, where, where world is defined as engagement with strangers and others, so those who exist outside of rational community. So drawing on Bowman coming into the world may be found in our membership of a different community, a community where we engage with strangers. This is a community which language refers to as a community of those who have nothing in common. Okay? So the idea of service learning is um, it's a project of um, where you position volunteer work or engage community engagement within your curriculum. Okay? So um, there are, I know of good examples of how this happens in physical education. Um, I think there's quite a few physical educators here today who trained in that background, and of course, outdoor education is another really good example. We are, um, you, and, and it fits so well to New Zealand curriculum as well, which at the front end talks a lot about community engagement, but it's something that um, teachers aren't so sure about how to go about doing really well and really effectively, and I think service learning offers a really good opportunity for this. So think about volunteer work as well, and how you would fit that into your curriculum and um, physical education examples are where you um, often schools, senior schools, senior high school students will work with people who have disability and that would be an example of a service learning project and so the PE teachers and the students in schools will work with those who have um, disability and helping them to engage and move in physical ways and I know outdoor education does a similar thing. Um, so that's some example there. And anyway, so as part of my research, I was looking at what service learning possibilities, sorry about the font there, purple, it's not very clear, but what service learning possibilities there are. And I kind of um, came up with these basically kind of two main ideas. The front one is a traditional service learning model. The second one, less common, is critical service learning, drawing on critical theory, and it's kind of like social justice projects. And then the third one is one that I propose, um, which I'm calling relational um, service learning. And that really addresses the limitations of the other two. But, um, uh, okay, I, I just wanted to point out, because um, some people get a bit annoyed about this, but <laughs> there isn't really one particular right way of doing service learning or volunteer work. Like, you could draw on any one of these frameworks depending on the context. So, even though today I'm really advocating for relational service learning, which draws on Gert Bester's theory of coming into the world, um, I would also use, I, and, I, and I do use, these other two frameworks of traditional and critical service learning projects. So it kind of depends on what you're seeking to achieve and the context in which you're working. So I just have to put that in as we explain it. <laughs> so I'm just going to explain the three different perspectives um, and then round up the, so probably in like 10 minutes, round up the, the conversation. Okay, so with traditional service learning, basically the idea is that there are privileged and underprivileged people. And those who ought, those who have ought to give charity and help to those in need. So you can all think of situations where you will have been in this situation where you are privileged, considered privileged, and you will help those in need. Um, and so the same would be for, for our students. Our students in this context that we work with are the servers in this in the service learning model. And they are involved in service learning projects. They are perceived as knowers, as helpers, and as experts. And um, I can give an example of this. We run our active movement um, program here, and, uh, and we work with the PE students, um, work with students, uh, with people from the community, adults mainly, who have really high intellectual needs. And um, they come in, and, and the idea of that, the way it's framed currently, or it has been framed, is that the students, most the PE students, are knowers and helpers and experts, and their job is to work with people who have. Um, high intellectual disability needs to, to develop their motor skills and their learning in that area. Okay, so that's kind of a classic traditional service learning project. Um, 
Those whom they work with are served are seen as without any knowledge and in need of help. Okay, so in this way, we're concerned with learning about the other or the stranger in order to change the other. And uh, I, I just made a, we link back to this drawing on the vines' idea. In this way, the way that Turk's learning is framed, linking back to this theoretical perspective, it's really to receive nothing of the other but what is in me, to receive nothing of that who, whom is distinctly different from myself, but that which is in me. So I will connect with what I see that I know in another person, but all the stuff that is really strange and different, I won't receive, or I won't engage with. Yeah. Um, I'll run through critical service learning a little bit quicker, because, um, yeah, it, it's less common, but it is, basically, it, it was birthed out of a critique of trad traditional service learning projects. Is any sociologists here? Um, the, the critique of traditional service learning projects is that it's reproducing um, existing inequities. So this idea of charity and help is um, is kind of given out, but it's not making any difference. And you think of NGO crit critiques in this area, especially in international aid organisations and things like that. So the the response was to develop critical service learning projects, and they seek to address the truth. Uh, the critique of traditional services through challenging root causes of poverty and injustice. Okay, so a, a critical service learning project, the goal when working with your students is to develop critical thinkers and actors who advance issues of social justice. And for example, this is a project, the photo up the top there, it's some of the physical education students here, um, some a uh, few years ago now, and they were working on a, an Anides um, project, raising awareness of sweatshop issues. And, um, and so it was kind of like that campaigning sort of uh, idea there. When you're framing or understand critical service learning, the, there's still the service-served dichotomy. And the idea is that you're concerned with learning about the other in order that you might help the other. So it's still, I'm here, I'm a knower, I'm an expert, I have skills, I am privileged, and I will help you who needs my help and in a social justice activist kind of capacity. But it's still kind of, there's a privilege, there's the underprivileged, I'm in a position of 